Hello friends, welcome back to DigiTalk and part 9 of troubleshooting and performance tuning. In this video, I am going to explain you about the GFR tool, which is called a Java Flight Recorder, Java Flight Recorder. Okay, so this is an all-in-one tool. Okay, in the previous video in part 8, I have explained you about the JHead, JMap, Visual VM and few more tools for taking the thread dumps and heap dumps and how we can do the analysis of heap dumps with the help of all those tools. But Flight Recorder is one of the unique tool or you can say it is an automated tool which take the complete stat of your JVM okay and publish the result along with the automated analysis so what does it mean of automated analysis that I will show you in this particular video okay so everything at one place so what does it mean as I said when we talk about the different kind of uh, issues in weblogic server okay so then then there are a lot of scenarios okay there are different threads that is getting processed by your application uh, there is a memory where you have a jvm heap and then you have a garbage collection apart from that you have a file input output you have a socket input output where your uh, web logic may be writing some file to certain directories maybe contacting database and some other applications in your network okay apart from that there are a lot of exceptions in your log files at runtime, there are a lot of objects and class are getting uploaded in your heap size. And apart from that, you have a different kind of a configurations for your JVM, right? And along with that one, if we uh, take the complete picture in a single scenario, then there could be a lot of issues related with all of those parameters. There could be a server crash. There could be a slow performance. There could be a server which is not responding. You may have stuck threads. You may have out of memory problems. You may have network problems. Okay, your web logic is not able to contact DB or some other applications, integrated applications. You may have a problem with the database, database sockets. Okay, or there could be a problem with the web logic itself, and there could be a code or development problem. So there are multiple scenarios when we talk about the troubleshooting of web logic. Okay, so this is a tool which I have mentioned is everything at one place. That means it takes care of all of the things at one place. Right, so for that you have to do a certain kind of a recording, okay, for your JVM. And once that recording is that recorded in a particular file that you can use and that you can open that file with the help of a flight recorder tool, JMC tool, okay, mission control tool. And then you can do a different kind of analysis with respect to a threads, memory, heap, garbage selection, file input IO, socket input output, exceptions, class loading, different kind of a configurations of your JVM. So everything you can do at one place. Apart from that, the advantage of this tool is it does the automatic analysis of all of the parameters and then it will give you a result of that as well. Okay, for example, when we uh, have a certain kind of a knowledge of JVM, we know that this is a certain JVM heap size for a particular JVM. This is the minimum size, this is the maximum size. Okay, and but when we talk about the tuning of JVM heap size, then maybe you will, you will get the result in front of you with the help of this tool, but you may not able to analyze it. You will be not able to do certain kind of analysis on that one. Okay, what is the uh, exact memory is required? Whether the, the memory that is configured, it is perfect or not? Or do I need to increase this? Do I need to decrease this? Okay, apart from that, there are a lot of scenarios that is in your applications. Okay, for example, maybe your applications are generating a lot of exceptions. Okay, and if you have application with generating a lot of exceptions per second, okay, then this also degrade the performance of your application. So this will give you, give you a particular idea of that as well. Like th these are the number of exceptions that can be generated uh, between this to this time, and this could degrade the performance of your application. So similarly, there are a lot of parameters, as I said, okay, and it automatically does a certain kind of analysis for you and that it displays in front of you when you open the uh, flight recorder files. So Java Flight Recorder is a performance monitoring and profiling tool that record diagnostic information on a continuous basis, making it always available even in the wake of catastrophic failure such as system crash. Okay, so that means you have to enable this particular Java Flight Recorder in your JVM with the help of certain parameters. And based on your configurations, it automatically records the runtime stat of your JVM. Okay, and then save it in a particular file. Apart from that, if you want to run it manually to, to create a certain kind of a recordings at a particular moment when you have a certain kind of a slowness or performance issues with, your, with respect to your weblog server, then you can use it manually as well. And this I am going to explain in this video. Okay.
now using java flight recorder so java flight recorder is not enabled by default it is commercial feature hence only available on commercial version so this is one of the important feature of uh, the java flight recorder that is a commercial version okay so you have to check with the licensing support of that one uh, for whatever the client you are working okay and to enable this particular feature you have to add two important parameters in your jvm always that is unlock commercial feature and then flight recorder as shown on the screen in red so these two parameters you need to enable in your jvm always whether if you want to automate uh, to to enable the auto recording of your flight recorder or maybe you want to uh, uh, take uh, a manual recording of your flight recorder in both cases you have to enable this particular parameter these two parameter in your jvm okay and the sequence of these parameters are very important okay sometimes what is happen is that we don't care about the order of the parameters that we specify in our jvm right but specific to this particular feature you have to first mention the unlock commercial feature and then second you have to write the flight recorder if you will make it in a reverse order it will not work and apart from that one if you will omit any one of the parameter then your server jvm will not start okay for example if you specify only the flight recorder and if you will not mention the unlock commercial feature then your jvm will not start and it will give you certain kind of a exceptions so enable flight recording you have to make sure these two parameters are enabled in your jvm always so first is auto enable recording and second is manual so in auto enable recording as i said first you have to enable the, these two parameters in your jvm after that you can collect the data of your jvm for example if you wanted to collect the, uh, the jvm data in every 60 second and you want to dump it in a particular file for that you have a parameter is start flight recording duration equal to 60 second file name equal to dump.jfr this is the name of your uh, jfr file and then duration i am specifying as a 60 second and the in option to enable the auto recording of your jvm is start flight recording so these parameters you can specify with the help of your jvm and in next few slides i am going to explain you more about the parameters second is your manual okay so if you wanted to run the manual jfr recording as i said certain uh, at some time you may have a problem with your jvm uh, maybe your servers are not responding you have a slow response right so in that case you may need to uh, enable the uh, you may run, need, need to run the manual uh, recording of your jvm okay so for that one the first one as i said you have to in you have to enable the two important parameters for your jvm in in, in in okay and apart from that once you are going for for uh, initiate the manual recording that for that you have the option jfr dot start jfr in capital letter and then the dot start in small letter so this will start the recording of your jfr okay and what is the syntax of that jcmd okay so the cmd is uh, if you are running the j rocket version of your uh java okay so this is already bundled bundled with this otherwise you can download it separately from the oracle website as well and then you can place it in your unzip the file and place it in on your server okay so the command for that is jcmd and then pid of your server whether it is the admin server or manager server or whatever you can get it with the help of ps hyphen ef okay then jfr dot start and the duration of that particular jfr file okay so because as i said it take the complete stat of your jvm at the runtime so based on the heap size that you have defined for your particular server admin server or managed server the size of jfr recording could be big okay if you have a larger heap size then obviously the size of this recording will be bigger okay so in that case uh, once you spe specify the duration if it is 60 second if i am taking the recording for 60 second and then i have to specify the name of my jfr file right so this is the command to initiate the jfr recording manually for 60 second and time you can provide in second minute hours or days okay and the result by default will be written inside the domain directory that means if we haven't specified any path in the file name the default recording will be stored in your domain so i will explain you this all these parameters in with few more example one more command is if you if you have initiated the jfr to for the recording and you want to check whether the recording is running or not okay then you can run the command with the help of jfr.check by specifying the pid of your server with jcmd command now if you wanted to stop the recording anytime you felt that okay the size of file is getting bigger and then you have initiated uh, the jfr recording for longer duration you want to stop that one then you can initi initiate that with the help jfr.stop and then if you wanted to dump collected data to a file and then continue recording for example if you have any if you want to initiate the recording but but at a particular moment you want to dump that in a particular file and then you want to continue with the recording for that you have option jfr dot dump okay 
now you have a additionally additional features as well along with whatever i have explained in the previous slide that is called flight recorder options okay so with the help of flight recorder options you can enable few more parameters right so for example if you wanted to create a recording on exit that means when you are uh, you want to enable the java uh, recording for a jvm but not always you want whenever your server is get crashed whether due to out of memory problems or stuck threads or whatever the reason so when the server are getting crashed at that time it will automatically take the recording and save the recording in a particular location so for that one you have to enable the option flight recorder options default recording equal to true dump on exit equal to true and dump on exit path equal to the path whatever wherever you want to save the that recording okay and then max size is the size of your uh, the maximum size of your gfr recording if you want to restrict that to a particular size as i said there could be a, the size file could be very bigger okay and you want to restrict that size then you can specify the size of of your record gfr recording with the help of max size max age if you want to specify the size of your uh, of your recording with the help of age for example the only for last 60 second duration jfr could store or one minute two minute or one hour or whatever that you want to specify timing okay and the command that it is shown on the screen and let me explain you it one more practical example in a next slide apart from that you wanted to compress the jfr recording then you have to specify the compress parameter as q you want to to delay uh the setting then you for you have a delay option and apart from that if you wanted to enable the debug and trace as well then you have a debug and trace options as well for the gfr recording right so now here you can see that i have enabled the gfr recording for my server so whenever my server get crash or get exit due to any uh, problems okay it save the uh, file in a repository which is inside the opt gfr and my server 01 okay and max age i have specified 1440 minute and size 100 right so that means once the above steps are completed the j rocket mission control flight recorder is enabled and configured to store the last 24 hours of events or until the flight cycle reach 100 mb so whatever the condition is met okay it will exit create the jfr file during the exit of my jvm right now important part how you can analyze the data with the help of java flight recorder so for that as i said if you are using j j rocket j, uh, jdk then it is already there for you if it is not then you can download the jmc from the oracle website for the link i have given on the screen place it on your server or even you are uh, doing the analysis on your windows machine or laptop or desktop then you can install it there it is simple as zip file you can extract and run the jmc okay and important thing you have to make sure that the corresponding in jdk is installed for example for jmc 8.3 the corresponding jdk supported jdk is 11 if you have jdk 8 and you are trying to start the jmc 8.3 it will not start and it will give you the error so make sure that corresponding jdk version is installed along with the jmc so once you will open the jmc.exe file this is the front screen of your jdk mission control tool okay so, so options are the same as we have for other tools and let me explain you other things so by default if you have Uh, any jvm is running on your local machine that means where you are running this tool in that machine if any jvm is jvm is running it will be listed in the jvm browser by default as of now you can see it is showing the jvm running mission okay so because this jmc is also a java based tool and it is also initiated a jvm so this jvm is by default of the jmc tool right and after that if you want to do the analysis of your flight recording files then click on file and then you can open the jfr recorder file for example in my case the recorded file name is admin server.jfr so once you will open that one it will take some time based on the size of your jfr recording and after that in the first screen it will show you the automated analysis result right so here you can see that the problematic situations wherever you have a problems it will mark in red so i have two areas which is marked in red as of now one is the garbage collection and for garbage collection it is showing the problem with the meta space live set trend okay so apart from that in java 8 onwards we have a meta space as well right apart from the jvm heap for that i have published another video in the jvm where i have explained about the meta space so here you can see completely see that there is a problem with the meta space okay that may be exhausted and i need to increase the size of my meta space in the jvm apart from that there are, you can see the exceptions is 100% thrown error that means i have a certain problems with my application code which is throwing the multiple exceptions and this could be the reason of the slowest slow or slow performance of my applications so if you'll expand 
the each section it will give the complete detail about that one so you can see the first section is talking about the parallel threads and then it is second is talking about the free physical memory the maximum amount of used memory was 93.1 of the physical memory available that means whatever the physical memory of your uh, of your server of that 90 3.1 server almost in use that means in that case you may need to increase the physical memory of your server and apart from that it will give you the pure more analysis of your jvm situation okay for example if you click on gc configurations or the jvm internal configurations it will give you the gc information like what is the current heap size what is your young generation heap size and apart from that what what were the parameters configured at that particular moment for your jvm right apart from that if you see that if you click on the lock instances okay so that means it will display you a uh, certain classes and the addresses okay those are blocking the threads okay so here you can see that threads in the application were blocked on locks for a total time for three hours here you can see that i have a monitor class which is logger okay this is a logger class in my code okay and this logger class uh, logger class it blocked for almost three hours and one minutes at, at that particular moment so this will automatically the issue show you that that this is a particular class and the, what is the total block time at that particular moment what are the distinct number of threads and what is the number of counts okay so apart from that if you if you click on the different options on the screen it will you will automatically understand a lot of things that is there in the tools right and apart from that for example if you click on socket io okay if, because their application is contacting their db as well right it is writing the db reading the data from the database as well so there could be a contention in the database where you are not getting the proper response from the database your application may be taking time to write the data to the database your applications may be taking time to retrieve the data from the database because of the socket issues where the database socket is not responding on the time so here you can see that in the figure this figure shows that for the application the longest recorded socket write took 349.745 milliseconds to write 81 byte to the host right so here you cl clearly see that when i click on the socket io and then you click on the event log and then you will see that the highest duration of your uh, of your uh, read and write okay so you can see that there are remote addresses also there from where the call is initiating to, is trying to read or is trying to write in this particular situation uh, the particular connection is trying to write the data and it takes 349.745 milliseconds to write only 81 byte of data to that particular host right so this is all about the jms jmc tool okay and i I'm, i hope that you will feel that this is a very interesting tool and just go ahead and explore is this in your local desktop or laptop as well even you are not working in a uh, full flash production environment then you can install your web logic in your local environment and then you can explore this tool Further. So thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for a few more interesting videos.